The 3rd of January 2019 will go down in Premier League history and one word sums it up. Greatness. Perhaps the two greatest Premier League managers of all time pit their wits against each other for all the world to see. But the managers were just the beginning of the story. Liverpool had one of the greatest Premier League centre-backs at their disposal. But City had an answer of their own. Mo Salah was proving to have the trained finishing instinct of an assassin. But Aguero had been doing that for the better part of a decade. The artistry of De Bruyne and David Silva. The final third threat of Firmino and Mane. Edison, Allison, Fernandinho, Fabinho, Cal Walker, Trent Alexander-Arnold. With City four points behind an unbeaten Liverpool side, a win for Klopp would have all but secured their first title in 29 years. The stakes couldn't be higher. The result of this was the highest quality encounter in Premier League history. Klopp opted for this 11, with Fabinho surprisingly not making it into the starting lineup. In front of a bouncing Etihad, Pep opted for this 11, with company being thrown back in freshly recovered from an injury, and De Bruyne and Walker watching from the bench. The stage was set. The pattern was set early on, with City able to get onto the ball. The rough and tumble Gagan pressing was a staple of Klopp ball, but Liverpool were more passive in the press, with City completing 25 passes on average before a Liverpool intervention. But even when they were more conservative, they were aggressively passive, maintaining a high block 4-3-3. Klopp was happy to let City have the ball. Possession for possession's sake was not a game that he was interested in. But importantly, he only let them have the ball in these deep regions. City could have easy possession, but they would have to work extremely hard to make any progression up the pitch. Firmino stayed slightly deeper, using his cover shadow to prevent the ball into the oft-isolated single pivot, Fernandinho. Salah and Mane ahead of him remained narrow, initially using their cover shadows to prevent the ball into the fullbacks, but they were like coiled snakes, ready to spring onto the ball side centre back with an aggressive press whenever the opportunity presented itself. This inevitably brought Edison into the game, and Liverpool's defensive shape shifted dynamically, as Firmino could continue his press onto Edison and Henderson would push onto Fernandinho to continue to make his life hell. Liverpool cut Fernandinho out so effectively that in the first 20 minutes, Edison had more touches than the pivot player. When KDB started as the right midfielder, he almost always stuck high in the half space like David Silva on the opposite side. And this meant there was more midfield room for inversion from the fullbacks. Zinchenko was suffering from an injury hit campaign and Laporte was not the right profile to invert. Danilo could invert to an okay level, but City needed more solidity in deep possession phases against the pressing machine, so Danilo was not always a great pivot option. As the minutes ticked by, Bernardo Silva knew he had to provide a secondary outlet option to help Fernandinho. He was much more comfortable operating in these pivot spaces, and he dropped deep, but Milner's engine meant that coming deep with him was no issue. Central progression looked impossible, but Aguero had been improving his all-round game under Pep and could operate in midfield regions more effectively. He dropped in, hoping to create a 4 versus 3 in midfield to escape this well-laid Liverpool press. Van Dijk had other ideas. Having arrived for an eye-watering £75 million from Southampton, many sceptics saw this transfer as a gross waste of money. But performances like this meant that public opinion was rapidly changing and he shut down Aguero early when he looked to make central inroads. The central lockdown meant that only 23% of City's attacking play came centrally. With City stunted centrally, I hear you asking, why didn't City just attack the flank? Well, since you know so much about tactics, why don't you become a manager and do that yourself? Well, now you can with Top 11, which is the best free-to-play football management game available on mobile and web. This immersive managerial game will allow you to select a team of your choice and implement your tactical philosophy to test yourself against other elite managers from around the world. Top 11 actually offers more tactical control than ever, so when you play against any of the other 260 million players worldwide, you can really see how well your tactics translate against other managers. But that's not all. You can fully customize your formations, your stadium, and your team's kit all the way down to how players celebrate goals. Download Top 11 today through the link below for absolutely free to enter a world of tactical fun and it helps to support the channel. Thank you Top 11 for sponsoring this video. If you can't play through the pressure, perhaps the solution was to go over it. After all, Liverpool did have a decently high line. 
On the rare occasions that Fernandinho got some time on the ball, his midfield men were still not options, but down the right he spotted Sterling. Raheem Sterling was blossoming into a world-class player under Pep and already had 9 goals and 6 assists in 17 appearances that season and was high on confidence. He was being inventive with his movement, setting traps for later in the match. Rather than strictly sticking wide where it would be easy for Robertson to track, Sterling often tucked into the half space, particularly when Silva was a deep pivot. This achieved two things. The most direct was when Robertson followed him narrow. Danilo often had space on the overlap as Mane was more central, ready to press the centre-back. But more importantly, it gave Sterling a second dimension in this match, which was another movement that Robertson had to be wary of. So with Fernandinho on the ball, Sterling would often fake central, shifting Robertson's body weight, and then getting the temporary room to run onto the ball over the top and into the box. Robertson was quick himself, so he would get back into the box to face Sterling up. His elite defensive ability meant that for the most part he came out on top. But Sterling did have his fair share of successes, setting up David Silva for a huge chance with the ball just falling on the Spaniard's wrong foot. Nothing came from it, but the seeds of doubt were being sown into the Liverpool defence. But make no mistake about it, this was no defensive Catanacho style performance from Klopp's men. In possession, they were a finely tuned weapon. But they too were going up against masters of the press. With Alisson on the ball, Sterling and Sane were tasked with picking up the centre-backs, with Aguero dropping deeper onto Henderson, who was already not the most possession-safe pivot. City's defensive shape adjusted in open play to allow the most effective press. Aguero occupied a halfway position, using his cover shadow on Henderson, but also ready to sprint onto Van Dijk. David Silva occupied a similar role, initially covering Wijnaldum, but City had identified Lovren as the weakness in possession, and Aguero would push higher onto Van Dijk to cut out that option immediately, while Bernardo Silva covered Henderson. Lovren would then be the only option, and David Silva would begin the trap, and City would contract around the left, looking to win the ball back immediately. Liverpool struggled, and City got into many promising situations. But the Blues hadn't realised that they had a massive problem on their hands. When David Silva was higher, Wijnaldum was often the free midfielder if Silva did not have his angles perfect. To prevent the easy pass, it meant that Sane had to begin narrower and suddenly he had two men to cover. Liverpool spotted the opportunity immediately. As often as possible, Trent pushed into this space and Alisson looked to find him the wrong side of Sane and David Silva. And once Trent and Wijnaldum were on the ball, they could penetrate almost effortlessly. This ploy actually went down in Premier League history. Lovren got onto the ball and Silva pressed aggressively. Wijnaldum had moved deeper and with Silva central, Sane took up the role of picking up the midfielder, leaving Trent free. Sane was two versus one and Wijnaldum acted as a decoy for the pass into Salah. Silva and Sane were still high, giving Fernandinho no chance and the telepathic combination play of the Liverpool front three cut through the citizens like a knife through butter. Mane faced up Edison with a huge chance to put the Reds ahead but it came off the post. It wasn't over though. As the ball bounced back, Stones, in a panicked rush to clear, whacked the ball into Edison. The goal was inevitable as the ball looped over Stones' head. But he did not hesitate, pivoting and extending a long lever onto the ball. This is still the most famous GDS outcome in Premier League history. Mere millimetres firstly here, and then just squeezing the ball under Salah's foot. Liverpool were growing into the game. On the half-hour mark, Liverpool were in their defensive stance and Stones played a sloppy ball across to company. Salah, as always, was ready to press aggressively onto the centre-back and this was his opportunity. The ball came across to him and he looked to move away. Company lunged in. Fortune was smiling down on him on that day. City had ridden their luck early and Liverpool hadn't made the most of their chances. A dangerous combination. The Blues, still unable to penetrate the centre, put their focus on attacking the flank, the left in particular. When Salah was caught pressing central too early, Laporte, as the free man, would receive the chip ball. Laporte was not an expansive passer or progressor, so Liverpool were happy for the centre-back out of position to get on the ball. But they could be much more menacing in the wide zones. Higher up, the two silvers would move high into the half spaces, dragging their midfielders deep with them. This opened up interesting new angles. The excellent passing ranges of the City centre-backs came into play, 
as company in particular would play these arrowing passes into the gap created and straight into Leroy Sane. This would set up one of the biggest battles of the match, as Leroy Sane and Trent Alexander-Arnold went hammer and tong for almost 90 minutes. At times Trent would get the better of him, emerging with the ball and setting up the counter-attacks, but often Sane with the shimmy of the hips would be past Trent and attacking the byline. He got there time and again before firing in a low cross to the front post. Van Dijk though seemed to have seen every play 5 minutes before it happened, as he was always in the right position to get the ball away from Aguero. Just. But what made Sane so difficult to deal with for Trent was actually David Silva. As soon as Sane got onto the ball, Silva would move across giving Sane plenty of options. He was perfectly positioned to receive a pass through the half space himself and then looked to create for Aguero and Sterling in the box. But this also opened up the opportunity for Sane and Silva to connect with one-twos, unleashing Sane's pace and getting him into these positions to get balls into the box. But the third scenario often occurred when Silva continued his movement wide, as Lovren could follow but that would leave too much space centrally. So instead Trent would often have to decide who to cover, and whenever he chose Silva, it opened up the opportunity for Sane to make penetrating runs into central regions and combine with men there. The pressure was piling onto the Reds, but every action has a reaction. With both Silva's high and no real inversion from the fallbacks, Fernandinho was an island, and Salah, Mane and Firmino looked to take advantage of this. They rarely looked to maintain the width as it would be far too easy for the fullbacks to cover them. Instead they converged centrally. They had no set positions and the interchangeability of the front three would mean that any of them could come deep to receive the first pass and draw Fernandinho further out of position. With intuitive one and two touch combinations they would find themselves bearing down on the back four. City however knew that a win was all they could afford in this title run and were willing to do all they could to prevent the transition, just about getting back in time to prevent Liverpool getting ahead. But it wasn't just Sane causing havoc down the flanks. With no central progression possible and limited involvement there, Aguero needed to find a way to make a difference. He did this by drifting wide both on the right and the left to pick up the ball from the centre backs when they would look to make those angled passes. This would then create an overload, making life a lot easier for his winger. And in the 40th minute, it started. Company arrowed the ball into Sane, who drew Trent, while Silva made the run. Trent was caught high up ball watching, allowing Sane to make the run over the top. This time his cross was not fully dealt with and City pushed forward. The ball broke to Laporte, making a rare foray forward, and he swung in across. Aguero went down. No penalty. The Argentine was quick to get back to his feet and he found himself between the centre backs. Lovren had his eyes glued to the ball and Aguero knew that. He burst forward at the last second and took the perfect touch, but he was still up against one of the best keepers of all time, on his weak foot at an impossible angle. Light work. Could the title race be back on? The question echoed around the Etihad as the sides made their way down the tunnel. But Klopp's Reds were the last team to take defeat without a fight. As the sides emerged for the second, a renewed vigour in the eyes of the Reds was evident for all to see. Liverpool came out flying and whenever they even considered taking their foot off the pedal, Klopp's bellowing yells reinvigorated them from the touchline. Liverpool's possession slowly climbed in the second half, as City, with something to hold on to, were content to sit deeper in their 4-4-2. But Klopp's big gamble before the match was proving to be a fail. Whenever Van Dijk or Lovren pierced the City front two and Henderson was on the ball, Bernardo Silva was confident enough to press him, knowing he was unlikely to turn him and cause massive problems in the midfield. Henderson was much more likely to play a safer pass rather than anything expansive and he ended the game with three progressive passes, less than half of the opposing pivot in Fernandinho, despite having more of the ball. Klopp needed to fix this. On the 57th minute, it was James Milner who made way for Fabinho and this did two things. Liverpool now had a much more natural and competent in possession pivot. Henderson in this right central midfield zone could also assist Trent to prevent the two versus one scenarios against Sane and Silva. It also allowed Trent to be fully unleashed in the full back role. Liverpool were a well oiled unit and with Fabinho and Henderson providing a solid attacking platform, Liverpool could unleash an attacking five. Trent and Robertson pushed up aggressively, extremely early in the attack and therewith allowed the wingers on paper to tuck in early. This gave them options. 
With Firmino already being a false nine, Liverpool had a three-pronged focal point as all of the forwards were happy receiving deeper with the others attacking the box. Whenever Liverpool did get past their men in the midfield, they could quickly begin to overwhelm the City midfield and the fluid movement and combinations of that front three would allow them to quickly attack the box. The back line were being stretched and Guardiola would thank his lucky stars that company was back fit as he foiled the league's best attack on more than one occasion. On the 62nd minute, Trent Alexander-Arnold swung in across and Edison came, but there was a mix-up with company heading away. The ball fell to Firmino and with an open goal gaping, he took a touch and whizzed in a shot. Company away, the finest of margins once again. When the ball was wide, the front five shape often meant that they had three men to attack the box. None of the three were aerial threats in the traditional sense, but the sheer numbers and quality of their movement meant that they were always a danger, particularly when being serviced by two of the finest fullbacks in the league. And if City's right back came across to make it look like a 3 vs 3 in the box, Trent had a rocket of a right foot and a more than respectable left, meaning he could find Robertson in great space to disorient the City defence and create from the left. In the 64th minute, Trent received in space and shaped up for a whipped cross into the box. Mane's movement drew Danilo infield and Trent checked onto his left. Robertson was in acres of space, but Trent played an unbelievable pass straight onto his left foot in the six-yard box. For the first time, a Liverpool forward got ahead of company. No defence could keep this Liverpool front three quiet for 90 minutes. The ribbons on the Premier League trophy were beginning to turn red. Klopp was sensing blood and they poured numbers forward. But throughout the 90, there was one man who kept Liverpool at bay. The Silvers could only push so high because Pep entrusted Fernandinho to hold down the entire midfield by himself, even at 33. For 90 minutes, he did just that. Whenever the Liverpool men thought that they had a moment to breathe in the midfield, Fernandinho appeared out of nowhere, pulling and prodding and always getting just enough of a foot on the ball to stop the attack. But Liverpool were pushing harder and harder and pressing with more ferocity higher up the pitch out of possession. Pep knew he needed City to battle to regain control. The aging legs of David Silva would be replaced by Gundogan. For all of David Silva's silky possession play high up, Pep needed more technical ability deeper and Gundogan provided just that. As much as he tried, Fernandinho couldn't do this job for 90 minutes and Gundogan's arrival meant that City could now have a deep midfield three in possession and do a much better job of beating that Liverpool high press. The 71st minute changed it all. Liverpool were in possession deep and it was one of the rare occasions late in the game that Fernandinho was left isolated. Sane looked to help but the vicious Liverpool press took over. Fernandinho was caught the wrong side and Wijnaldum spotted Salah darting between the centre-backs. He slipped him through and Salah looked set to breeze past Stones. Edison, quick off his line as ever, intercepted. But rather than booting the ball high, he kept a level head and found Danilo. A game-changing decision. Danilo once more had the movement of Sterling ahead of him. He faked his trusty run in behind. And as Robertson moved wide to cut that passing angle, he moved central into the half space. He was found and this time made the run across the pitch. Aguero had drifted wide left, pinning Trent while Mane had been high on the attack, meaning Sane was a free man. Sterling released a perfectly weighted pass. Sane unleashed a shot. In a game of millimetres, Trent got a foot onto the shot, but it was only the bottom of his studs, not enough to deviate the ball from its target. It hit one post, then the other, before settling into the back of the net. A Liverpool attack, a City goal. Action and reaction. Desperately needing a goal, Liverpool poured numbers forward, leaving space on the transition. Big chance after big chance emerged for City, but they couldn't kill off the game. That was a dangerous game to play. In the 84th minute, the ball broke to Henderson and he once again found Salah in behind. A huge save from Edison. The danger was not over. From the resulting corner, Edison got a weak palm onto the ball and it fell to Wijnaldum. His crisp volley got past Edison and was destined for the back of the net. Stones off the line, a game of millimetres. Liverpool would push for the rest of the game and company having given his all on his return from injury limped off the pitch. The Reds would not be able to find a breakthrough, meaning City came away with a 2-1 win. It was not the highest scoring game, but when combining stakes, generational players and managers all at their peak, as well as high level tactical game plans, 
This match may very well be the highest quality game the league has seen. A game that epitomized an emerging rivalry between two of the greatest Premier League sides. City would go on to win 16 of the next 17 games, while Liverpool were unbeaten from that point. But this would be the game that decided the title, as City would clinch the title by a solitary point. The Pep and Klopp era will be remembered as fondly as the Pep and Mourinho El Clasico era. So as it comes to a close, we should cherish every last moment. And you can start just that by diving into this in-depth analysis of another Pep and Klopp classic, this time with a very different result.